Hey guys, welcome to another quick episode on control structures in Ruby. This is sort of the last thing that you want to understand before we talk about functions, and then we're pretty much done and can move on to Bash. Again, this is not supposed to be something that explores everything that Ruby can do. It's simply showing you the basics of programming that are common to all programming languages, which you can then apply to Bash so that Bash doesn't look so weird anymore. So the first thing you'll notice is that I'm no longer in the Ruby shell. I'm in a text editor. And I'm just going to write a Ruby script that we will install. So we could say shebang user bin Ruby if we wanted to. You don't really have to because we're just going to run this with Ruby in a shell. So I'll create a text file. This is just, you can use any text editor that you like. Vim, Emacs, Nano. You could do this on a shell or any other plain text editor. Save this. I guess we'll make a Ruby folder. Ooh. Oh, you know what? I'm in the wrong. We'll call it code. <clears throat> okay. So, and we'll call this file control flow dot rb. And dot rb is the ex file extension that will let your operating system know, hey, this is a Ruby file. If you know how to open these, use a Ruby interpreter for this. So we've got the file here. Now we know how to assign variables. So we could say age is, uh, you know what, we'll say Timmy is 10. Tommy is 15. And we will say age where Deus X becomes awesome. We'll set that to, I don't know, 16. Although I was probably younger when I hit this. Uh, we'll call it 15. So now we want to basically say, are these kids old enough to really enjoy Deus Ex? It's a question that we're all asking ourselves. So what we really want to say, and I guess I'll write this in pseudocode first. So this hash is a comment and nothing will be evaluated after that symbol on it. So this is basically, you can write anything here and Ruby ignores it. So these are what you use to keep notes for yourself and really for other programmers too. If Timmy is old enough, print, uh, you know, we want to print, like, say that he can play Deus Ex. And then we want to do the same thing for Tommy. If Tommy is old enough, all right, you get the point, it's all the same. The way you would actually write this in code is if, surprise, surprise, so if some condition, then do some stuff. Do some stuff. Okay. So if Timmy, which is really just his age, is greater than 15, well, I'll just print out. Uh, actually, we'll say puts, which is another way of saying print, but with a line at the end. We'll say put, so print, put string, Timmy can play Deus Ex. And I guess we'll do the same thing for Tommy, right? Because we don't know a better way yet. And we'll just change this to Tommy, and we'll change this to Tommy. Whoa. Okay, so now if we go back outside, um, actually we can just open a shell, and we'll say uh, CD code, I think that's here. Yeah, and we'll just say Ruby control flow. Ha! <laughs> uh, I've been doing too much Python. Uh, we'll do end. Okay. Try that again. That's weird because we thought Tommy, uh, sorry, yeah, Tommy should be able to play the game. Well, we made a mistake here because it's greater than or equal to 15. Um, so we could either say greater than 14, but that would be a problem because then someone who's 14.5 years old, 14 and a half, could play the game, which isn't right. So if the cutoff is this, we'll just replace this with the actual variable, then what we're really saying is if it's less than this, we don't want them to play. If it's more than that, we do want them to play. So what we really would say is else puts a string. And we'll sort of do the same thing for Tommy. This is intentionally weird, okay? Um, okay, so now we've got this. We fixed our little bug here, our first bug, where if he's 
greater than or equal to the age where this becomes awesome, then he can play. If not, he cannot. Okay, so we'll run it again. Timmy cannot play, and Tommy can. Okay, but this is really repetitive. And if you ever see something repetitive, it should be sort of a hint to you that perhaps you could refactor it. We'll do that in the next video. But for this, uh, I just want you to understand conditionals. If something is or compares to or whatever something else, then you do something. Otherwise, you do something else. And you can add another form to this. So you could say uh, before the else, the else always has to come last, but you could say else if Timmy is equal to magic age. We'll say something magical, and we'll say the magic age is, uh, how old is he? 10. Okay. Make sense? If he's less than the age where it becomes awesome, sorry, if it's great, if he's older than that, he can play. Otherwise, if he's at the magic age, do something else. And if none of these other things, so else, otherwise, if none of the other things are true, then just put this. And we can just say nothing else matched. All right? Because none of these other conditions were matched. And else will only fire after it's tried all the things before it. You cannot put one of these other things after an else. The else has to be the last thing before the end. So you're saying, if something is true, do some stuff. Oh, if this other thing is true, put some other stuff. If nothing else matches, this is optional, but you can do it so you have a default case. Do something in the default case. And end. That's the end of the if. Okay, so that's what an if looks like. I'm just going to quickly show you some comparison operators. So we have uh, a couple that you've seen in this little example equals comparison. So we'll say uh, one is one, two is two. Ah. Okay. We can say if one is the same as two. Now, a lot of people make the mistake at the beginning of saying if one is equal to two, but that's not actually true because a single equal sign is assignment. So this would be an assignment. If one, what you really mean is equals two, puts math is wrong. You can say end. You could say if one does not equal two, puts math is right. End. And there you go. It prints to the screen, puts with an end line. Math is right. So that's equals equals, which means, are these two the same thing? Or the same value, sorry. Do these evaluate to the same value? Is really what it's saying. Do these not evaluate to the same value? So if one does not equal, you can think of it as a, like a strike through the, uh, the equal sign, it's saying if this isn't equal to that. You obviously have, I'm gonna just show you a slightly different form of this, uh, here we'll move this to a new screen. A slightly different form, just to save myself all that typing. You could say, um, puts, well, we're really just testing for truth. So you could say, puts true, so do something if one does not equal two. Makes sense. So this is sort of combining all of these things into a single form. Do something, provided that this evaluates to true. So if one is not equal to, that's true, then puts true. We could also say if one is greater than two, nothing's going to happen there. If one is less than two, puts true again. And then, as you saw before, less than or equal to, as you saw in the example. All right, so to sum up just the basics we've talked about here, what we're really talking about is control flow happens by comparing things. And if that comparison turns out to be true, then you do something. And if not, you do something else. And you can sort of see a very simple case here. You can use variables. You can use objects. 
all that matters is what things evaluate to. So Tammy, it's just a symbol that evaluates to this number, and this evaluates to a different integer right here. You can compare these things. That's why variables are so great. So compare some stuff, do something else if, else. Else is optional, but has to be last if you do use it. And then you have these different types that we just talked about. Greater than or equals, equals equals, not equal to, and you've got some other ones like modulo, but um, we're not going to talk about that because it's not really something very basic. Okay, that's that. We're going to talk about, I think in the next video we'll do looping. So ways to loop, ways to iterate over an object. Uh, and then uh, we'll do functions, and that'll be that. Cool, I'll see you in the next video.